Hello folks, this is Pastor Mike Hoggard, pastor of Bethel Church in Festus, Missouri, and head of Prophetic Research Ministry with another Watchman video broadcast. I brought something with me today that uh, I don't know if you ever noticed, but I usually uh, keep this just kind of over to the side. Uh, I'm used to carrying this thing around, and I'm going to talk about this uh, for just a minute, here in just a few minutes. Um, I hold in my hand a, a computer. Now, some say, well, that's a cell phone. This is actually a computing device. I remember the first computer I had back in, oh, way back, way back in 1982. The very first computer I had. Before that, uh, I, was, I was starting to become fascinated with the idea of having my own computer. You see, I grew up in the 60s and 70s and 80s. And during the 70s, I can remember watching a Disney film called The Computer Wore Tennis Shoes. And it was about, in interestingly enough, it was about a young man that uh, I can't remember exactly the movie, but it had something to do with the computer lab of this university in California. All, you know, all these movies are made in California. And, um, but anyway, he worked in this computer lab, and all of a sudden he was like melded in, or this computer had joined with him somehow, and he just was this fantastic brain. He could think like a computer. And if you remember back from the 70s, uh, these computers filled up entire buildings. You know, just for these one uh, computers. I, I watched um, a movie that I had not seen in years last night called Tron. And I think there's like a remake or a sequel of that coming out uh, here before too long. Uh, this came out in 1982. Here again, another Disney movie. And uh, it showed basically a man being pulled into the computer world and doing battle against the evil, uh, the uh, central whatever it was, the, the main program that ran all of the uh, other things, like the computer antichrist is what it was. Uh, 1982 was, was about the year that I had my first computer. Now I had read things on it, seen these movies, been dazzled by TV shows and science fiction and I remember getting my very first Commodore VIC-20 computer and I was amazed at this thing. Here it was, a computer in my room and I could tell it to do things and I, I remember I had envisioned at that time being able to take massive whole encyclopedias and typing them in article by article into my computer, storing it in there, and then being able to ask my Commodore VIC-20 computer any simple question and it would ding, 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 and come up with the answer for it. Well, my Commodore VIC-20 had a whopping 3.5 kilobytes of memory. And it stored all of the uh, data back then on a little cassette tape. And it took forever to load one of these programs in. You had to press play on the tape and boy, you just had to wait. And uh, so I, I didn't quite see my dream quite fulfilled of what I thought a, a computer should be. I remember years later, uh, finally I could get a disk drive. You know, one of those floppy disk drives. 300 bucks I paid for this thing. And... Um, then I remember seeing it in, a, in a, um, a computer magazine. Um, I could buy a one megabyte hard drive for my Commodore 64 computer. See, I upgraded. And I was going, one million bytes. This is amazing. The very first IBM style PC I owned was somewhere around 1992, 1993, something like that. Preloaded with Windows 3.1, an 85 megabyte hard drive, and two megabytes of memory. And I thought I was in heaven. We've progressed a lot in this world since then. And I now hold in my hand uh, a computer. And this computer, if I, if I remember right, this is a Samsung Jack, and I think it operates at about three to 400 megahertz, which, you know, our average desktop PC is blazingly faster than that, but not bad for a small handheld device. But this computer operates all somewhere around 300 times faster than the Commodore VIC-20 I, I had. It has somewhere in the neighborhood of about 2,000 
or two thousand yeah two thousand megabytes more memory than my Commodore VIC-20 had, more storage ability, more computing power, more software than I ever had, more programs, and I finally have the ability right here in the palm of my hand to load up the internet. I got Internet Explorer here and I can load that up if I got a Wi-Fi signal somewhere and I can ask the internet any question that I want and through the millions of interconnected computers all across the world I can get an answer to that. I can find out exactly where I'm at using Google Maps on here and the triangulation that cell phones are, you know, they're like the little coordinate things and uh, find out exactly where I am anywhere on the globe. This is absolutely amazing, the technology that we hold in the palm of our hand that we actually take for granted. We've come a long, long way since 1982 when I had my first computer and it's just absolutely amazing. I can make telephone calls, all of which is done digitally. You see the computer takes my voice and turns it into numbers, zeros and ones, and transmit it uh, through a wireless signal. I can receive messages from, oh here's one from my wife, a text message, can't ignore that for too long. But anyway, uh, this is the technology and this is this is old stuff already. I mean, this phone's about a year old, year, two years old, something like that. And it's already ancient stuff. We're going to talk about technology. We're going to talk about something called the singularity in this broadcast. And I want you to understand, if, if we have progressed this far in this world, as far as electronics is concerned, where are we going in the very near future? We, we're seemingly changing like every six months. We're doubling our knowledge of the universe. So I want to read some articles and we're going to talk about what's called the singularity in this broadcast. And uh, here is an article that somebody sent me and this is really what got me going with this. So if you sent me this, I appreciate it. And I'm just going to kind of read uh, this article through because I think it has some very interesting things that we need to look at. The article is called from PC World. It's called Better Living Through Implants. Imagine if you could learn to fly a helicopter by downloading software directly to your brain. You know, we saw that in the movie The Matrix. Imagine if your eyes could see an object overlaid with data miles away in the dark. These science fiction scenes from The Matrix and the Terminator movies may be less fictional in the future thanks to the fascinating science behind medical implants. Interdisciplinary teams of surgeons, research engineers, computer scientists are creating complex electronics designed to work within the human body to sti or to simulate human functions. Today's bionic technology helps people suffering from disease or disability and may pave the way to a future where the blind can see and the deaf can hear. Researchers have achieved breakthroughs in medical science, but the level of improvement these advances offer doesn't approach the level of typical human sight, sound, thought, or movement. But implants are getting better, faster, and smaller. And experts say that they could be used to augment healthy human performance within five to ten years. A look at the current research in medical implants shows not only unprecedented potential for curing diseases, but also, and here's the word right here, a new paradigm for understanding human potential. Now stop right here. That word um, is seen, I don't have a copy of it here, that word is seen in Marilyn Ferguson's Aquarian Conspiracy. The new paradigm is something that you'll see in the Purpose Driven Life movie. You'll see in the new emerging church this whole concept of a new paradigm or a paradigm shift is something that we're seeing everywhere. We're seeing it in corporate logos. We're seeing it in advertising, marketing. We're seeing it in the church nowadays. All of a sudden, they're, everybody is talking about in different ways and in different styles, but they're all talking about some sort of transformation that's going to take place. A new paradigm. A shift in the way that humans exist. The article talks about...